I'm Phil Bulmer, and welcome to one of my shooting permissions. I often sit here and bag pigeons, but the bag floor really. Recently, I revisited a particular pellet that's got me thinking. It's called the Pile Driver and comes from London-based manufacturer Pax Guns. The manufacturer claims these pellets offer unrivaled levels of efficiency at the muzzle, and retaining that energy all the way to the target. Now, the big question is: Does it really deliver superior efficiency downrange for hunting? The claimed efficiency of the pile driver stems partly from these pellets being significantly heavier than a typical heavyweight airgun pellet. Heavyweight pellets often develop more power in a pre-charged air rifle compared to lightweight pellets. Now very heavy pellets are nothing new, but until now they do have some really big drawbacks in their design. They tend to abandon the traditional drag stabilised shuttlecock shape and become solid slugs. They are usually very parallel sided and have a lot of surface area in contact with the barrel's rifling. Trying to get the pellet to properly engage and then travel down the rifling consumes energy, which ultimately reduces power. There's also another drawback. Airgun pellets, almost without exception, have a hollow tail end. In terms of aerodynamics, this is a colossal disadvantage, as it produces a lot of turbulence-induced drag, and that's a bad thing. The pile driver carries 30 grains of mass in 2.2, yet it addresses both problems. It has splines along its length to reduce surface area and also a fine drive band to seat the head in the rifling. It also has a partial boat tail rear end to reduce that energy sapping drag. It's a tried and tested technology used on centre fire rifles. Of course, being a shooting journalist, I wanted to subject these pellets to a thorough test to find out if the efficiency claims really stand up. I started off by running a quick test rifle over a chrono. This particular 177 test gun stays just within the UK legal limit using pile drivers with a 4.5mm head size. These pellets are 21 grains apiece, which is quite colossal really, when you consider most 177 pellets are around 8 grains. Accuracy wise, they're certainly fit for purpose. The groupings were more than adequate for humane hunting, and they don't half hit with a thump. At UK legal limits, they do have a pronounced trajectory due to their huge mass, so ranges need to be kept quite short. I simply wanted to see if departing from a shuttlecock principle and relying purely on gyroscopic stabilisation imparted by the rifling alone would prove a disaster. Quite simply, it works fine. In UK spec 12 foot pound guns, these pellets are noted for their potential in tipping 177 guns already close to the limit, some way over it, though it doesn't happen in every instance. Even slightly over the UK limit is still over the limit and you risk prosecution. So do check your rifle against a chrono to make doubly sure if you do want to use them at 12 foot pounds. Now where these pellets come into their own is at FAC level velocities and indeed this is really the manufacturer's suggested use for these pellets. They do work at 12 foot pounds but they're not particularly suitable. To fully test the efficiency claims I headed off to the factory in London where firearms rated air rifles could be shot for the benefit of a host of test equipment. This allowed me to test a selection of heavyweight hunting pellets in different calibres. First job, weigh the pellets in batches of five and take an average weight to be entered into the computer. A chronograph was situated at the muzzle allowing us to see how each shot performed and a computer was used to record and display the statistics. An additional chrono was placed downrange at 25 yards to see how much of that all-important energy had dissipated on reaching the target. The results? Well, trying the 177 at 12 foot pounds, the pile driver did develop slightly more power at the muzzle than the other heavies, and even a few mid-range pellets. That's not unexpected. Physics favours the heavyweight. However, the 15.4 grain Rabbit Magnum, with its large contact surface, didn't even reach 9 foot pounds at the muzzle. Clearly, it needs a much higher velocity for it to be worthwhile. Interestingly, nothing aside the pile driver retained even 10 foot pound by the time it crossed the finish line. Yet the pile driver made it to 25 yards with over 11 foot pounds left. That boat tail and extra mass is the key, and of course it performs at its very best with FAC power levels. It's at FAC velocities in 2.2 where we start to see the figures open up. We also introduce the fabled Ely Magnum. It's no longer made now, but the Ely Magnum is a 2.2 bullet head that's a whisker heavier than the pile driver at 30.1 grains. In theory, it should have the upper hand on the pile driver thanks to that extra weight. Now I should say this is the same test rifle with no change in settings between shots, running a fresh charge of air every time and all at the same working pressure. The only variation here is the pellet. Results? Well, understandably the lighter 15.9 grain pellet produces the least amount of muzzle energy. It's 34 foot pounds which is still not to be sneezed at. 30 grain Ely Magnum with its large surface area has squandered its weight advantage and left the barrel almost 6 foot pound lower than the pile driver. It's not got a drive band, so air will have blared around it as it engaged the rifling. 
friction in the barrel also have cost it dearly. The day sung and the pile driver are quite close at the muzzle, though the pile driver still has the efficiency edge. The chrono situated downrange at 25 yards reveals a very interesting story. The pile drivers arrived at the target with 39 and a half foot pounds of energy remaining. Note that's energy remaining. That's about four and a half foot pounds higher than the next best pellet. It needs to be remembered these figures were produced over only 25 yards. Had we fired over a greater distance, the retained energy differential would have been widened even further. So here's the icing on the cake. Look at the downrange figure for the pile driver and then look at the muzzle energy for the other pellets. Leaving aside the day sung, the pile driver delivers more energy at the target than the rest produced at the muzzle. The day sung drops six foot pounds to so the pile driver's two and a half. That really is a start lesson in efficiency. The winning formula for efficiency seems to be a heavy pellet, a single drive band, splines to reduce friction, and that all important boat tail at the rear. So, to answer the big question, does it really deliver superior efficiency downrange for hunting? The answer is most definitely yes. These are the most energy efficient pellets on the planet. The pile driver has one more ace of its sleeve. It was designed and patented in Britain and it's manufactured here as well. If you want to learn more about these hunting pellets, visit the website at www.piledriverpellets.co.uk.